My name is Ashley. I'm 21 years old. I served as the president of the College Democrats of Georgia last year, my sophomore year of college. And now I'm a junior at Oglethorpe University studying political science. I'm also serving as the first East Asian student body president of Oglethorpe University. And I'm able to graduate early because of my credits and I'll be graduating in fall 2024. Yeah, so I'm definitely seeing, that's a great question. I'm definitely seeing the trends of things that are going on right now domestically and inter internationally, internationally. So I'm seeing that uh, Gen Z voters, especially young people voters, are enthusiastic about voting for, for progressives and Democrats alike uh, back in the 2022 midterm elections, especially in Georgia. However, right now, I did see slow, almost a little bit of decline in enthusiasm from very uh, left progressives and stuff like that in their hopes of voting for Biden and their enthusiasm in that due to other circumstances that may have kind of shifted their waiver. But I do think that young people are excited about politics. I think they are very engaged. And some of the trends I've seen is very big on student loans. So what's going on right now? And then Biden, whole people not wanting to pay them back and trying to figure out ways to forgive them at a certain amount. I think students are very excited about that. And another one is about how how Democrats are see more inclined to take on the responsibility and wanting to protect LGBT rights. I think that's very important among the youth and the youth see that. And that's the reason why they're going to deliver in 2024 is because they believe that Democrats have truly helped be there for all communities and be able to help represent their Gen Z values. So those are just some of them, even though there are millions more. Yes, I think that's, uh, that is going out there and meeting the young people where they're at. So being a part of organizations that are nonprofit, nonpartisan and stuff like that, being able to actually talk to people, young people, especially ages 15 to 29 years old. And we really want to hit that benchmark of having 18 all the way 24 year olds and stuff like that. Yes, you go to places like college campuses, you go to places like the mall and stuff like that, where you can actually interview people who you know are young. And it's okay to ask them, hey, are you in school? If they're not, you can ask them, hey, are you Gen Z? You know, it's a polite way of asking somebody their age without actually being like, hey, how old are you? And it turns out that they're a 30 year old woman, you know? But meeting where they, meeting them where they are and where they're at and asking them questions like you are right now is how I know that we can definitely affirm that they are being represented in media when it comes to young people's voices. Yes, that's by getting them involved, by having a call to action. So to try to like, in my opinion, get them involved and like engage with, you know, wanting to be a part of journalism or even just part of something bigger than themselves and stuff like that for young people. It's just that like, it's, it's the ability of asking them what's important to them and be able to help provide resources such as, hey, join this Democracy Now organization or Voters to Tomorrow organization, something like that, nonpartisan, nonprofit, you know, and get them involved in that. So can, they can tailor their passions or whatever they are very uh, enthusiastic about and do something about it. That's how we get them engaged. And then we ask them about their story. Why are you engaged? Why did you become engaged? And that's how we can definitely help them be able to relate to the media and the media be able to help get audiences across the nation or locally about why our young people are so important and how they too also have things that they are enthusiastic about. I think that right now we're not really seeing, I think that well-educated voters and stuff like that, I'm talking to the ones that are, you know, are going above and beyond to, the young people going above and beyond to actually do their research. I think they will vote ethically about who in the long run they should vote for to help move our country forward. I think the ones that, it's very hard because it's not a black and white answer I can give, but I think the ones that spend hourly 
time of their day scrolling through TikTok and stuff like that. Yes, obviously, I don't think they will vote ethically. I do not. Because I think that they're so entranced. And this is just a group population, not, not even the whole Democrat Party of young people. You know, the Democrat Party of the young people, I think they will pull through and realize what's more important is not just a singular issue, but looking at the big picture things, right? Like if people are so upset about the Middle East um, situation going on, they're like, oh, I want to punish Biden for not you know, helping the Palestinians more and siding with Israel. You know, this is a touchy uh, topic, but those who scroll through TikTok and are just becoming so influenced by other people's voices and other people's opinions, they're not doing their own research. They're not doing their own background check and, hey, let me actually read what Biden said or let me read what Trump said. Let me actually read it. Let me actually see where the source is coming from, not looking at multiple videos and making someone else's opinion theirs. Those are the type of video, those are the type of voters that won't vote ethical because they don't know how, because they don't know how to do the research themselves. But as for the ones that have this kind of mentality of, okay, well, if I don't vote for Biden and then I know I'm going to just give Trump the election, it's not like Trump is going to be more empathetic toward Palestinians than Biden, right? So if you have a bunch of, radical people running around somebody that's saying oh i all over tiktok acting like the majority you know them being ethical it's like oh we're not gonna vote for biden and something that because we want to punish him remember this guy's in november 2024 biden's the president of genocide like all these propaganda infographics seen on these very highly generated algorithm purposefully trying to show people certain things to get them riled up and, it's, and it doesn't, sorry, real quick, but it's just like the ethical standard is that like they, those kind of people are the ones that are going to want to punish Biden. But in reality, they're just shooting themselves in the foot if you call yourself a Democrat, because obviously you're giving the Republican Party the win in 2024. And it's not like any of those Republican candidates or Trump as the nominee, maybe it's not like they're going to be more empathetic. In fact, they'll be less empathetic towards Palestinians than Biden himself. So that's just shooting yourself in the foot. No, I don't think that people like that will be ethical in their vote. I think they can do it by by staying engaged, you know, reading the news, you know, and I know reading the news is very hard and it's, it's a lot, but I think that them being able to actually engage with their high school or whatever school they're in, you know, getting involved in local nonprofits or, or nonpartisan organizations, volunteer work is a way that they can stay engaged, even though they can't vote. They can still help out by volunteering, giving their time to learn more by doing.